Hello students, you are most welcome to section 14 of your darling course, Energy 207. In this other session, I want to look at disinfection and sterilization. Disinfection and sterilization. You will see that we have looked at the area of infection control in the last study session and this is one of the policies of the hospital to ensure that infection is controlled in all health care facilities. This session presents a pragmatic approach to research use or selection of disinfection and sterilization process. The approach is based on well-designed studies to assess efficacy through laboratory investigations and effectiveness through clinical studies of disinfection procedure or sterilization procedure. So when you are through with this study session, you should be able the five various terms used with disinfection and sterilization to understand the rational approach to disinfection and sterilization to highlight various factors that affect disinfection and sterilization to explain methods of disinfection and sterilization. We look at the applicable terms that we use in this two processes. The first one is cleaning. When you say cleaning, it is removal of the feasible soil from objects and surfaces and normally it is accomplished manually or mechanically by using water with detergent or enzymatic products. Through cleaning, you will ensure that most of these deaths are removed from the material before you now subject the material to high level disinfection or sterilization and that cleaning we talk of manually and mechanically is the way of removing the dirt from that object to talk of disinfection we describe a process that eliminates many or all organic microorganisms, except those ones that are spore forming. We have discussed this when you are talking, when we are discussing microorganisms in, in, the, in, the, in some sessions back. I would say organism is spore forming organism. Like bacteria, I told you that the classes of the rod-like shaped bacteria, which we call bacilli, they are pore forming and they are not easily destroyed. Therefore, disinfection cannot destroy spore forming bacteria. So, in that care setting, objects are disinfected by liquid chemicals or wet pasteurization. Either the various factors that affect efficacy of disinfection can nullify or limit the efficacy of the process. Efficacy can be limited by one, if the materials are not cleaned properly before you subject them to disinfection, you won't receive much from that disinfection. The type and level of microbial contamination still matter. The load of the microbe on that system, on that uh, object matters, and type of that organism matters. If they are performing organism, you can destroy them with disinfectant. That is why there are also factors you consider when you are trying to use disinfection to ensure you remove microorganism from an object. Then how do you concentrate that your disinfectant? How do you mix it? Level of concentration is also a factor to its efficacy. And also, how long does this material take when you soak them in this disinfection, it's also a factor to where this disinfectant will work well 
or not then what is the physical nature of that object if the object has crevices or it has some holes those holes must be cleaned properly and you allow those materials to enter those holes before they can be cleaned before they can be disinfected totally so physical nature of that object is a factor to efficacy of the disinfectant temperature and ph of the disinfectant is also a factor and also we consider humidity of that process where you put on like we said this infection is not sporicidal that is it does not kill the spores of microorganism but a few disinfectant will kill spores with prolonged exposure at least if they stay there for more than 3 to 12 hours they can also kill uh, spores but they are referred to as chemical chemical sterilant and many people will call them high level disinfection when you use something like glutaraldehyde of 2% for 20 minutes you can as well achieve chemical sterilization apart from that we talk of that third one we refer to as sterilization. It is kind of a process that destroys or eliminates all form of microbial life and is carried out in net care facility by physical or chemical method. This one will clear off everything about microorganism, including the spores. They also be removed by method of sterilization. They could be achieved by physical or chemical method. We have steam under prayer, autoclave. We have dry heat, ethylene oxide gas, iron dioxide gas, and liquid chemicals. They are principal sterilizing agents we use in healthcare setting. Sterilizer is intended to convey absolute meaning. Unfortunately, however, some health professionals and technical and commercial literature refer to disinfection as sterilization and items, especially. Sterile. When chemicals are used to destroy all form of life, they can be called chemical sterilant. This same germicide used for total exposure pillows are part of disinfection process. So, like we have said, that many of these chemicals used for disinfection can also be used for sterilization. It depends on the concentration and the time of exposure that you put them to. Those are the applicable terms. What we have next is what we refer to as the contamination. The contamination has to do with the means of reducing the number of microorganisms on a particular object so that they can be safe to be handled by man. They can be safe to handle, to use or discuss. When you talk of the contamination, it tells that this this uh, agent will kill the microorganism. It is a number two bearest minimum, and they could not cause any injury or hazard to anybody handling them before they can now be washed. What you are saying is that you must contaminate a particular object before you can have right to touch those objects for cleaning. If not, you are exposed to being infected by these microbial agents. Also, you talk of antiseptics. They are also germicides, but because they are applied to living tissues and skin, they are not as strong as others, like we have mentioned. They are at microbial only, applied to inanimate objects. In general, when you talk of disinfectant, they are applied to inanimate objects. When you talk of antiseptics, they are applied on the skin. They apply on the skin. So when you look at some of these antiseptics you use at home, you will see them, even the soaps, the solid one you have on the soap like uh, Tetmo soap and others, or the tongue, they put it there that it is it is strong. It is destructive to microorganisms, but it is skin friendly. 
So they do this agent so that they can keep my cognizant, but they can also protect the skin against their colonization and the skin will not be destroyed by the effect of this microbial agent. We talk of personal approach to disinfection and sterilization. How do we know whether we are disinfecting a particular object or we are sterilizing that object? What you do is that you should classify your instrument into three categories. Critical instrument, semi-critical instrument, and what they call non-critical instrument. Let me say that when you talk that instrument is a non-critical instrument, it means that this instrument come in contact only with the inter skin and they do not contact with mucous membrane. Therefore, sterility of this instrument is not critical. That's why they are called critical instruments. Now, let me say that this critical instrument may not need to be sterilized. They can only be disinfected because the skin itself as protective device against infection of pathogenic microorganisms. When you talk of semi-critical instrument, it breaks the skin. It goes beyond the skin and may touch the mucous membrane. They are called semi-critical because they break through the skin to some mucous membrane. And this substance too can also be sterilized, but high level disinfection will also do well. You don't, you don't need to sterilize them because you don't go beyond the mucous membrane. When you talk of critical instruments, let me say that this is the most critical of all instruments we talk about because they touch every tissue in the body. They touch blood, they touch body fluids, and they can touch all the physical organs in the body. Therefore, there is nothing you can do to those one than treating them as being critical by making sure that they are sterilized. Sterilization is not compromised in this kind of critical instrument. How will you now know the factors that affect the efficacy of disinfection or sterilization. One, we talk of number and location of microorganisms. We have mentioned that before. You talk of innate resistance of these microorganisms, which means some of them have resistance to some of these agents we use. So if they have resistance to the agent, you cannot agent cannot kill them. I don't see that those people that those ones that are spore forming. They are innate resistance because that spore is used to protect themselves against any adverse reaction of this your chemical agent. Then you talk of concentration of this disinfectant. How do you concentrate that? If you say something is one in twenty, compare something that is ten in twenty. Ten in twenty is more concentrated than one in twenty. So it shows how concentrated they are. The potency will be affected by this concentration. Also, we talk of physical and chemical factors, which may also influ influence the uh, efficacy of disinfectant. Physical agent includes temperature, the pH, humidity, and water hardness. They are physical nature. And chemical nature, nature includes what the content of that microbial agents are. It depends how powerful this and uh, this agent could be when they are used against microorganisms. I discussed on the issue of duration of exposure that the more the longer the time of exposure, the longer or the, the more efficient that agent is. Then I talk of cleaning as a factor. If you don't clean properly, you will not give room for this agent to penetrate the object. So you must clean properly to remove all stores and dirt to ensure that this agent can penetrate this properly and ensure its efficacy. I talk of method of sterilization. We have physical method, 
chemical method and we have radiation method. You talk of physical method that is the use of autoclave, autoclaving method. And this method is the most widely used in some hospitals, but they can only be used against um, those objects that cannot be destroyed by high temperature. Talk of chemical method, we have mentioned that you can use chemical sterilant, whereby you will dig all your instruments there and they are they be able to destroy all these microorganisms, including their spores. We talk of addition method too. Some of these pre cellulose industrial um, materials are exposed to this addition method of cellulization, which may involve using the gamma ray or some of these uh, addition that is industry. It are used in large scale industry to to sterilize those materials industrially before they are put out into the market for sales. This includes the olive syringe that you use. They have been sterilized from industry. The sutures that we use to suture the ones are part of this material. So students, I believe you have learned much on this method of ethical or what we call a disinfection and sterilization. When next we meet, we shall be discussing more certain topic. The darling course NSC 207 microbiology. Until then, thank you for listening.